This is the second section of the numerical methods chapter, and this section is called iteration. And this is a method we can use to help us locate roots. Now you'll see these diagrams, and uh, sometimes they're called spider diagrams. And you can see how like these lines seem to creep towards the roots, yeah? These two, they sort of creep towards the roots. This one doesn't, it just, shoots off and basically iteration is where you have some sort of rule or function yeah and we'll call that uh, f of x so you've got some sort of function f of x which we're going to use to help us find a root and we have some sort of starting value that we're going to put into f of x a starting value and let's call this starting value, it can be x0, x1. I'm going to call it x0. And x0 is going to go into f of x. When you do that, out comes another value, x1. Now here comes the clever bit. We take that and we put it back into f of x. And then once you do that, the next thing that will come out will be x2. And then x2 goes into f of x, and the next thing that comes out is x3, and so on. Now, sometimes these values of x, as you work them out, will get closer and closer to the root. Sometimes they will get further away from the root. Now, when they get closer to the root, we say that the um, xn converges to a root xn being like the number of times we've done the iteration so here xn converges gets closer to a root whereas here xn diverges yeah it's not getting closer to anything it just diverges it's it's, it's diverging away from uh, any roots that exist now you might be asking yourself, well, why this blue line, y equals x? Well, what happens is you take an x value, that gives you a y value. Then that y value you put back in to f of x, it now becomes an x value. So this right, uh, blue line, y equals x, re represents your y value equaling or becoming your x value. So the y value there, well, what equivalent x value is it? It's this x value, yeah, because the line y equals x. Um, that goes into the function. That gives you a new value, uh, y value. Well, what's that y value as an x value? You go to the line y equals x. Then you put that into the function. What comes out? That's a um, y value. Go to that line, make it an x value, and so on. It's the same here. We start with an x value. It becomes a y value. What's that y value as an x? Change it to x. It becomes that. Put it into the function and do the same thing. It's the same thing. Start with an x value, change it to y, um, put it into the function, it becomes y. Then y becomes x, goes into the function, y becomes x, and so on. And it's uh, a very quick way of locating roots. You'll, you'll often find that within a few steps of it, iteration, um, you can find um, uh, the root of a function. So this process here is called iteration, where you go around in this loop um, multiple times. Right, so here we have a function. It's a nice simple one, x squared minus 4x plus 1. Show that the equation f of x can be written in this form with x as the subject. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is write it as f of x equals 0. So x squared minus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Um, then we can um, divide everything through by x. So we end up with x minus 4 um, plus 1 over x equals zero so I've just divided everything by x and then if I take the 4 and the 1 over x to the other side 
it's done. Okay, QED. Right, it says that f of x has a root in interval alpha, that's the root in interval 3 to 4. Use this iterative formula with your starting value of 3 to find x1, x2, and x3. Right, okay. So this iterative formula basically says to find the next value, x of n plus 1, it's 4 minus 1 over your previous value. So can you see that basically it's this rearrangement, um, but with x n here and x of n plus 1 um, over here. Now there's a quick and easy way to uh, do this on your calculator. So x0, our starting value, equals 3. Now this is the quick and easy way to do it on your calculator. So what you do is you type in your starting value 3 and then you press equals. Okay, what that does is this uh, stores the starting value x0 um, on the answer button. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two, we are going to type in this iterative formula. Well, actually, this side of the iterative formula, but where it says xn, we're going to press the answer button. So what we do is we type in 4 minus, and I suppose we'll press the fraction button, um, but I'll do 1 over answer so here this is what it should look like you actually press the answer button now all you do now is press equals every time you want your next value of x you press equals 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 and that will give you x1 x2 x3 and so on so pressing equals once will give you x1 pressing equals again will give you x2 pressing equals again will give you x3 and so on. Now, why does this work? Well, the first time it does it, it puts 3 here, our starting value. When you press equals, whatever answer you get gets put down here. So the x value you get, or the y value you get, gets put here as the x value. So every time you press equals, this changes to what number you get just after you press the equals button. So I'll type that in, press equals, I get x1, press equals again and get x2, and so on. It really does save a lot of time. You don't want to be typing this in over and over again. So let's write down here x0 equals 3. So I'm going to get my calculator. I'm going to do 3 equals, so uh, 3 is stored in the answer button, 4 minus fraction button 1 over press the answer button, right, equals, I get 11 over 3 which is 3 and a third, 3.6 recurring. So x1, um, 11 over 3. Oops, I was going to put pi over 3. 11 over 3, which is 3 and 2 thirds, 3.6 recurring. Now I'll just press equals again. I get 41 over 11 for x2. which is 41 over 11, press the SD button, that's 3.7272, so it's 72 recurring, and x3, just press equals again, 153 over 41, and press the SD button, that's 3.7272. 3, 1, and so on. And if I press the equals again, I would get x4, x5, x6, and so on. And if I kept pressing it, you'll notice that after a while, so after I've done x several times, so x several times, actually what happens, it, it settles down to 3.73, two zero five oh eight oh eight and it settles down to that value 
yeah and if I keep pressing equals it doesn't change so I've really quickly I've found the root of that um, equation x squared minus 4x plus 1 okay here's another one so first thing show that the equation has a root in the interval 3 to 4 so we work out f of 3 which is going to be 3 cubed minus 3 times 3 squared minus 2 times 3 plus 5 and f of um, 4 well, that's going to be 4 cubed minus 3 times 4 squared minus 2 times 4 plus 5 so let's work those out so 3 cubed is 27 minus 3 times 3 squared, that's 3 times 9, minus 27, so that's 0, minus 6, 2 times 3, plus 5. Okay, so I get negative 1, which is less than 0. And if I do 4 cubed, which is 64, minus 3 times 16, which is 48, so minus 48, minus 2 times 4, which is 8, plus 5, I get 13 which is greater than zero. So I'll say something like, since there is a change of sign um, between f of three and f of four, there is a root in the interval We could write it like this, uh, three uh, in the interval three, four. Um, I suppose we could write it as uh, a, an inequality, I suppose, like it is in the question that in that interval there, there's, there's a root. Okay, part B. Use that iterative formula to calculate the values of x1, x2 and x3, given your answers to four decimal places taking so in the first bit we'll take x0 as 1.5 now remember um, we type in 1.5 equals now we're going to do square root um, we're going to press the fraction button and we're going to do answer cubed minus two times answer plus five we're going to go to the bottom of the fraction and just put three and all we need to do is to hit equals so um giving your answers to four decimal place i'm going to have to hit the sd button probably so x1 i get one point uh three three how many decimal places four so three three eight five three three eight five hit equals again i get x2 um, as 1.2545 if i round it up and x3 press equals again i get 1.2200 zero, zero. so it looks like it's conversion to a root Okay, let's now try it with x0 equaling 4. Now, what we should be able to do is if we um, scroll up again, I think we're going to have to type it in again. I don't think there's a, a quick way of doing it. Let's see if we can do 4 equals and then scroll up to the equation that we typed in and see if that, oh, I think it does. So yeah, we can just scroll up without having to enter it again um, and just use it again and we get 4.5092 equals um, x2 5.4058 equals again x3 equals 7.12 one nine now we're not asked to comment on it 
but I can see it looks like this one is converging, settling down to a root. It looks like this one is diverging and it doesn't look like it's um, going to a root. It just looks like it's going to get bigger and bigger off to infinity, that one. I could be wrong, but that, initially that looks like what's happening. Right, exercise 10b on pages 280 to 282 of the textbook.